Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today we're going to expand the utility of the motor controls trainer board we created in the last application exercise by installing a three-pole circuit breaker. Before we begin, let me remind you, I am not an electrician and you cannot use anything in this or any other lecture as professional electrical advice. Follow the rules. Follow the code. It's there for a reason to protect people and property from hazards arising from the use of electricity. Some of the material and techniques you may see in this lecture may not be utilized for a permanent approved installation, but is for demonstration purposes only. This content has been developed for edification only. While reasonable care has been exercised with respect to its accuracy, I assume no responsibility for errors, omissions, or suitability for any application or misapplication of its contents. Let us begin. Recall we left our base motor controls trainer board as empty as your lab partner's head. Let's spruce things up a bit by adding a reusable circuit protection device. I am no doubt referring to a circuit breaker, a reusable circuit protection device that protects circuits from unusually high current events associated with short circuits by opening up like a switch and stopping current flow. Once the cause of the short circuit has been detected and removed, the circuit breaker can be reclosed. Circuit breakers differ from fuses and that they are reusable, however, rely on mechanical means to open. Today we'll install a three-pole circuit breaker. The circuit breaker is in effect a triple-pole single-throw switch, which if you think about it, is just like three mechanically interlocked single-pole single-throw switches such that they open and close simultaneously. The simultaneous opening and closing of all three contacts is yet another advantage circuit breakers offer over three uncoordinated fuses. The schematic symbol for circuit breakers sometimes indicate the magnetic and thermal detection mechanisms used to actuate the contacts. First, we'll test the basic operation of the circuit breaker. When the manual switch is pulled down, the ohmmeter indicates the circuit breaker L to T contacts are open. When the manual switch is pushed up, the ohmmeter indicates the circuit breaker L to T primary contacts are closed. Now we'll wire up the circuit breaker. Note the plug is currently locked in the lockout tagout enclosure. We can now wire phase L1, L2, and L3 from the terminal blocks to the circuit breaker. The black, red, and blue wires serve this purpose. Alternatively, if you are making use of a motor control trainer board with a permanently mounted cord that does not make use of an initial set of terminal blocks, you can directly route phase L1, L2, and L3 to the circuit breaker and land the neutral and ground connection to the board using an additional set of terminal blocks on the right-hand side. When the plug is unlocked and inserted, note the DMM indicates the top of the open circuit breaker is hot as expected. The DMM indicates the bottom of the open circuit breaker is cold as expected. Note the DMM is reading 0.742 volts, essentially zero volts. When the circuit breaker is closed, the DMM indicates the bottom of the closed circuit breaker is hot as expected. That's the point. The circuit breaker can make or break connection to a circuit based upon its actuation state. Opening the circuit breaker depowers anything downstream of the circuit breaker. The wires, terminal blocks, and cord upstream of the circuit breaker would still be powered on until an operator unplugged and locked out the plug. In addition to isolating a circuit, a circuit breaker also serves to protect the circuit from high current events associated with short circuits. Let's put this function to a test. Warning. Don't try this at home. There are additional circuit protection elements in play. Here's the circuit breaker hooked up to a contactor wired such that phase L1 and L2 go phase to phase with no current controlling element in between. Ordinarily, the closure of this contactor would be a bad idea under full sail. However, the moment the phase to phase event occurs, the circuit breaker recognizes the high current event and opens up to save the day. Despite the asymmetric nature of the fault, in this case, a short between L1 and L2. Note how all three poles simultaneously open. Again, the simultaneous opening and closing of all three contacts is yet another advantage circuit breakers offer over three uncoordinated fuses. Once the cause of the short circuit event has been inspected or removed, the circuit breaker can be reset. Cost for the setup was pretty minimal. After all, it's just a circuit breaker. I'll try to include the part numbers in the information section below this video. Next up, Let's wire up the control transformer used to provide pilot level voltage. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. 
Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank <laughs> you.